Welcome West Wing pilots and YouTube followers. Today I'm going to show you how to shoot an ILS into Portland, Maine. Um, so right now, I'll show you the map. We're turning onto a downwind. I took off from Portland, I want to make this flight short for me. But right now, I'm using Microsoft ATC and we're turning a right downwind to runway 29 or here. Now, as you can see, they have me level at 2100. I'm holding just a little above 250 knots, that's uh, the autopilot doing that. But they are telling us to expect vectors for an ILS 29er. So if you don't have the charts with you, what you're going to do is go up to World, Map, and you're going to click on the airport. When you go into there, we can see on runway 29er that the ILS frequency is 109.90. And the course heading is 2902. So as we're flying along, we're going to pull up our radios and we're going to select our ILS frequency 109.9. We're going to select that active. We can see here it comes up India Poppy, India Papa Whiskey Mike. And we'll turn our course knob until the course reads 2902. So, now that we're on a downwind, they may vector us out a little bit further to necessitate the turn just because I started in Portland. But what ATC will do is they'll give you a base leg, then they'll give you a turn to intercept the localizer, clear you for the approach, and then clear you to land. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and slow down to about 210 knots, just to give myself a little less speed, a little more time to think about things. As we slow, there's the turn I was expecting. They're turning me a little bit further out just so there's more room to maneuver. So as we slow down, I'll lower the first notch of flaps here and the second notch just to keep our nose attitude a little bit lower. As you can see, the autopilot likes to burble a little bit. So right now, all our headings and altitudes are coming from ATC. Now, we see here the uh, default FSX CRJ gives you a decision height of 200. That is the decision height. That's the height above ground level. And that's what we call our minimums. Now, our minimums if we don't see the runway lights or the runway environment at our minimums, we have to execute a missed approach. Today we will. I set up the clouds manually so that we would break out at minimums. But if we didn't, there's a whole missed approach procedure to follow. Um, if you have your own charts, it'll show you that there. If not, uh, the default flight sim ATC will vector you, I'm pretty sure, for another approach, and you won't have to shoot the whole missed approach procedure. So I will join you guys once again when I'm on a base leg, and from there we'll shoot the rest of the approach. Okay guys, so now ATC has turned us onto our base leg, we're heading 200, uh, trying to maintain 200, uh, auto throttles aren't doing that well, probably because the CRJ doesn't actually come with auto throttles in the real world, and we're at 2100. As you can see, we're on about a 20 mile right base for 2-9er. Now as we start to get closer, I may take another break because this may take a little while, but we're going to have a right turn. So they're going to turn us to about a heading of 2-6-0, and they're going to say something along the lines of west wind 138, turn right heading 2-6-0, descend and maintain 1,700, maintain 1,700 until established cleared ILS runway 2-9er. Now, Microsoft ATC will do it a little bit different. They'll probably tell us to contact tower at the same time. And they'll word it just a little bit differently. So there's our next turn. 
He's just bringing us in a little bit closer. If you fly in VAT sim, this won't be a problem. Normally the controllers are really good at, uh, Turn right, heading two, three, five, one, at vectoring. Three, here we go. We're coming a little bit closer. And one thing I also did on the GPS here, I went into procedure. I was down at select approach. It knew I was going to Portland because I had the flight plan in. So I selected ILS 2 Niner, vectors, load, and then activate vectors to final. Don't want to miss this instruction. Turn left, heading 205. So I'm going to slow down a little bit here. You can see I started my turn to 265. I'm descending to 1,700. And I'm going to do a read back. Now I switched to the 2D cockpit so you guys could see this a little bit better. But I'm going to bring my speed down to about 170. I'm going to contact tower. Now, as we can see, we're heading straight for that line, and what ATC will do, especially real world, is they'll vector you within 30 degrees of your approach course. So now that we've done that, I've lowered another notch of flaps and I'm slowing down. Our next steps, of course, will be to get the gear down and get flaps to full. So first, we're going to intercept the localizer course. Now, the default CRJ has a tendency to overshoot a little bit, but it will come back and intercept that course just fine. Now, we'll see the glide slope on the right side of the PFT there. You can see a pink diamond right next to this uh, altimeter tape and some dots. Now, when that's about a dot to half a dot high, we're going to lower the gear and decrease our speed to our VREF, or our approach speed. Once we're, the, once we're slowing down, we'll lower flaps to 30 and then to full flaps, which is 45 on the CRJ. And as we're coming down, we're going to be looking for our minimums. As you can see, just above our compass rows on our left display there, it says 1700. Now that's our feet above ground level. What we're looking for in uh, Portland is 242, 200 feet sorry, above ground. On our altimeter tape, we're looking for 242 feet, and that is our minimums. Now if we come down and we can see that blinking rabbit leading us to the runway, we're allowed to keep descending 100 more feet. But as a general rule, 200 feet above the ground, if you don't see the runway, go around. As you can see, we're getting closer to intercept, so I'm going to arm approach mode. Now what approach mode will do is it'll intercept the localizer, and it keeps altitude hold on until we intercept the glide slope. Once we intercept the glide slope, it'll maintain that glide slope down to the runway. We're on about an 11 mile final now. And as you can see, we're getting very close to the center of the localizer. And now we're starting our right turn to intercept that localizer. Now, I don't fly from the 2D cockpit very much, but if you hit W, it'll bring up this screen. That may be help you see the approach lights better, but I'm going to fly from the virtual cockpit once we get closer. As you can see, we're overshooting the localizer some. That's the nature of the default planes. They will do that, but we have enough time to correct, so it won't be a problem. Another good idea is to sync your heading bug with your runway heading. So if we go around, we can just hit heading and it will maintain that heading for us. We don't, well, it's one less thing to think about. 
as you can see, we overshot the line, but not by very much. And we're already coming back to intercept it. Now, if you want to, you can disengage the autopilot when you get close to intercept, help the plane turn a little bit, and then re-engage the autopilot if you want to fly it, or hand fly the whole approach, which I do recommend it is good practice. Okay, and there's our glide slope coming down alive. They're clearing us to land. So I'm going to dial back our speed, lower the gear. And as you can see, altitude has disappeared from following the glide slope down. What it doesn't say is localizer should also be armed up here, and it is. We are holding localizer with the autopilot. So now as the speed starts to come down, and we're on glide slope going to lower one notch of flaps. And as we continue to slow down, don't now one thing I did last time, you don't want to throw in flaps too fast. As you can see, we're still on glide slope, but if I had thrown in that last notch of flaps like I'm about to do now, we would have burbled up above the glide slope, and we we would have had to catch up to that. So right now, we're at a thousand feet. We have about 800 feet to go, and it's always good to keep that in your mind. You can say that out loud. We have 800 feet to go to minimum. Read out. Normally, read out a thousand feet, 500 feet, 200, 100 minimums landing or go around. Now I'm going to switch back to the virtual cockpit here. So we have 600 feet to go. And there's 500 feet. Now, 200 feet to minimums on localizer on glide slope. We're at our approach speed, full flaps with gear down, and we are clear to land. There's the rabbit. There's the approach lights on the runway. We'll disengage the autopilot, and there's minimums. Here's where we make our decision. We're landing. I'll disengage speed hold. Pull the power to idle. Flare the plane and touch down. A little off center line. So correct that. Thrust reversers and braking to stop on the runway. I hope you guys enjoyed this ILS tutorial. If you want to see more, leave a comment or put a response in the forums. Have a good day.